Hey guys, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you a complete installation of a concrete pool patio or a concrete pool deck. What, what do you guys call it? We, we usually call it a pool deck, but I know a lot of you guys call it a pool patio. So let me know down in the comments. What do you guys call this thing? So what we're doing right now, we were hired to come in here and do the forming, the pouring, and the finishing of the pool deck. I wasn't hired to do the grade work, the prep work. So the homeowner took care of that himself. This pool is an older pool. It already had some concrete around it that was broken up. So the homeowner removed all the old concrete. He brought in all this crushed rock and compacted it. And he got the styrofoam laid down for us. So we got two inches of styrofoam under it also. So we came, we showed up today, and we got to get all the forming done and get it prepped and ready to pour for the next day. So that's what we're doing right now. We're pouring a, a four inch thick, at least on average, three and a half to four and a half inch thick concrete pool deck around this thing. So we're using two by fours for the framing. And right now I'm just getting everything all put together. We're going to go about four feet wide with the, with the pool patio around the pool. And I believe, if I remember right, the pool was about 32 by 12 itself. So that that gives the homeowner, you know, we're going to make sure he has four feet all the way around. And what I'm doing right now, you know, I'm driving in the pins to hold the forms. And we can, we can fasten the forms right to those pins. Those pins all have holes in them. I'll have a link for those pins down in the description if you want to check them out. We use them for all our framing because we can either nail right through them or screw right through them to hold our forms that makes it that makes forming really easy so now what I'm doing is I'm checking the grade of the pool coping most newer pools the coping is pretty level it's usually within about an eighth of an inch this one where it was quite a bit older it was up and down about a half to three quarters of an inch so whenever I went and set my, my forms, I'd make sure I'd check the pool coping. And then I'd lower, I'd lower the form about a half to three quarters of an inch lower than the pool coping. So any water that hits the, the concrete deck is going to run out away from the pool and not into the pool. So T is doing the, the fastening of the, the forms to the stakes for me while I'm holding the grade stick. And you can see my laser there in the background. That's, that's the Topcon RL H5B. It's a self-leveling laser. So I just I just stick it on the, the base legs, hit the on button, and the thing self-levels. So it's now it's the next day. It's ready to pour. You can see we got the wire mesh in there. We got the slab bolsters under the wire holding it up so we don't have to pull the wire up. The slab bolsters keep the wire up into the concrete. And we're just using that cardboard just to keep a bunch of splatters. Whenever you dump a pow buggy like that, it splatters a little bit. So we're trying to keep as many splatters off the pool coping in and out of the water as possible. That pow buggy, it holds quite a bit of concrete if it's full, but we only went about half full with it because I had quite the terrain around this pool to go over. And it... You know, really, it's, I know it's got dual wheels on it, but it's not that great in soft terrain. You know, soft sand, soft crushed rock. It really doesn't go very good. So we kept the power buggies to about half full instead of filling them right up like we normally would. So what we do is we mag, this, we mag the concrete to the pool coping. And we did put duct tape around the pool coping. That at least uh, you can kind of see it here on this front edge, just to help keep that that front edge pretty clean. So we'll we'll pull that duct tape off today, and when we pull it off, it keeps that edge nice and clean for us. But we're magging right to the top of that pool coping, and then obviously right to the top of our board, and then we can screed right off each one to make it nice and easy to screed. I use when we, you know, up here in Maine, we get a lot of freeze and thaw, so we use a 4,000 psi mix for our exterior pool patios like this. I also got fiber mesh reinforcement in it. It's called microfiber. You can't even really see it. And we have, we also use a 
for you guys that watched a lot of my other videos, I put a water reducer in this thing, so it allows us to pour about a five to six inch slump without adding too much water, and that helps keep up the strength of the concrete. And then another thing we do is we add air, it's called air entrainment in the concrete, and the air entrainment, it, it's like putting tiny microscopic bubbles into the concrete, and what that does is in the winter, it allows the, the snow and ice to melt get absorbed into the concrete and then refreeze and it, those bubbles give the water that refreezes room to expand in the concrete without hopefully without damaging it I mean sometimes it does but it really helps having that air entrainment in there so we're mag floating you can see we got Sydney there mag floating the board Luke and Darren are, are screeding and mag floating the inside and then I'm just, I'm hustling as fast as I can with that power buggy. I had the power buggy from the driveway. The driveway was out towards the front of the house. That was as close as we could get the concrete truck. So I'm running back and forth as fast as I can to try to keep these guys going, get the concrete in, because it was warming up pretty good today. We wanted to make sure that we got all the concrete in, and then we had a little bit of time before we had to go back and start finishing. Darren's doing the screeding now, and he's doing the bow floating. And then we're gonna finish up on that corner and then we'll get we'll get ready to screed. We install the, the railing and if sometimes they'll have stairs in them, we usually install those two to make sure they go in right. The mag? The one that you were using is right here. So now what we're doing is we're getting ready to start finishing. This was about an hour after we got done pouring, so it didn't take long before it was ready to start finishing and I'm I'm cutting in my joints. We're gonna, instead of saw cutting this, we're just gonna cut the joints in the same day. So we like, we always do two joints off of that skimmer, those two corners on the skimmer, because if we don't, it always seems like it wants to crack off one of those corners. So we'll go off each corner, even though it's really close together, and that seems to help quite a bit. And then I like going off each corner of the pool and then I'll figure out what I want to do in between you know whether I want to go if this is if this is four feet wide on the pool you know I'll go four or six feet wide with the joints depending on you know how it looks so that's what I'm doing here I'm, I'm getting my corners and then I'm doing the ones in between yeah but the, there was another one a longer was, one yeah do you want me to go look? That joiner with the handle there, that allows you to get your joints cut in pretty early. I probably could have cut them in a little, a few minutes earlier. You know, the concrete was still pretty green, pretty soft, but with that thing, you can get them cut in real early. So Darren and Luke are getting ready. You can see they're getting their, their skids to get on the concrete and stop mag floating it. While I start cutting in all the joints, there's going to be quite a few joints going around this thing. So, you know, you definitely want to get on it early. For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. We do all types of concrete flat work. You know, we specialize in stamp concrete, staining, pool decks, sidewalks, slabs, floors. So we're usually pouring concrete every single day on somewhere, some type of job. Then we also do a lot of repair. We do a lot of epoxy floors. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe and hit the bell notification too. I come out with a couple videos a week on all different types of concrete stuff. And if you like this video, if you're getting any value out of it, go ahead and smash that like button. YouTube likes it when you guys hit that like, like button. It, they'll put my video out to more people the more likes I have. So, you know, let's get those likes up into the thousands and get these videos out to as many people as we possibly can. Now Darren's kind of showing Sydney there, you know, the the technique of mag floating. Sydney's pretty new. So he's he's kind of going over there how to mag float the surface when it's ready and and get it ready for a broom finish. We're going to put a broom finish on this today. Luke's cutting in some grooves. I've got my tape over there. You can't really see me, but you can see the tape measure there. 
So we're figuring out what we want to do with those diagonal grooves off there. Now Darren's getting on there when he's mag floating it. He's he's making sure that the concrete matches the coping perfectly. You know, we don't want to leave it low. We don't want to leave it a little high. So if he has to dig a little bit of concrete out just to match that coping, then that's what he's doing. We've already got some mag, so I'm right now I'm brooming and Luke's finishing cutting in a few grooves over there on the right and Darren's mag floating. I'm going to angle that broom around that kind of that curve a little bit. So just kind of to follow the curve with the broom lines. You can see uh, the guys over there, they're keeping busy. Darren's really working that joint and cleaning up around that railing to make sure there's no concrete paste on any of those couplings. Now I'm following right closely behind him. As soon as they get that mag floated, you know, if, it, if it's ready, if it's firm enough, we want to get the broom finish right on. We don't want to wait. If you wait too long, you may have to mag float it again. You know, out in the sun like this, it would only take a couple minutes before that surface would dry up and you wouldn't get a really nice broom finish on it. Then you'd have to go back and mag it all over again. So I'm following right behind Darren, and then I'm jumping over, and I'm doing what Luke is mag floating, just to keep up with him. Now, now we're going to put an edge on it. We're going to just keep the edge nice and rounded, and we're going to give it that like a little bit of a picture frame look. So we're using a small edger today because of the radiuses on those corners. It's pretty sharp radius. And if you had a you know a big edger with a that's big and wide, it would wouldn't go around those radiuses very easy. So that small one goes around them real easy. I'm just using a two foot broom today because it's pretty light, pretty easy and you know, we're not in a big hurry with all of us here finishing, so I can get away with just using that little two-foot broom. It leaves a nice, fine broom finish on the concrete. You know, when you do a pool deck, obviously you don't want it to be slippery, but you don't want it to be too rough either, or it's going to be hard on the feet. So there's kind of a fine line in between what's too smooth and what's too rough. But when you do them a lot you know when you do dozens and dozens of them a year like we do you get that you get that feel pretty good so that's basically it guys how to install a concrete pool patio and i appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next video